if some literals can be unified, the same algorithm should be able to unify the terms also. Can you see that or not? So, you have a clause which is a set of literals. Now, let us take only two literals there. You want to unify those two. So, you start matching from the left side, right. The same way, suppose there are two terms f of something and g of something and so on. Now, if their first symbols match, then only you can unify. So, after they match, you start finding out. The same way, you can also see that terms can be unified, right. Anyway, they are just strings, you are unifying the strings by choosing one variable to be substituted by a term, fine. But there is one danger in finding out that one variable is x, the other variable is a term where x occurs. Suppose, mismatch occurs at these two points, then how will you unify it? Let us see an example. Suppose, you have p, one literal is p x y, another literal is p f of x y. Now, when the unification algorithm works, it finds out both of them as p. So, perhaps it is unifiable, it goes for the next step. C is x and f of x. So, you should give x here, f of x as the term, x as the variable. So, it goes for the substitution x by f of x, right. So, then it updates the formulas, updates the literals to f of x, y, p, f of f of x, y. Fine. And it does not mark that place to omit it and then go for the next mismatch. It again starts from the beginning. So, it sees that p is there, p is there, it matches. Now, f, f is there, matches, parenthesis, parenthesis, matches. Now, x and f of x, right. So, you see the danger, it will go on looping over there, it will never be able to come out, okay. So, all it says is that this also should be a condition for telling that in such cases the literals are not unifiable. The same thing happens for terms, instead of p you will have some g of something and g of something, right. So, same thing also can happen for the terms, fine. So, what are the cases when the literals will not be unifiable or the terms are not unifiable? First thing is they should start if they start any one of them starts with the negation symbol, then all of them should start with the negation symbol, right. So, in other words, we can say their first symbols are the same, whether it is a term or a literal starting with the negation symbol or not. All their first symbols should be same, either it is a not symbol or it is a predicate symbol or it is a function symbol, fine. So, once this happens, then only it goes to the next step, then it tries to find the mismatch, okay. So, once a mismatch is found, one of them should be a variable, the other should be a term, at least one of them should be a variable. If both are variables, then it takes the first one as variable, next one as the term, okay. If they are terms, then again it would have matched the symbols, function symbols. At that instant, if the function symbols do not match, it will say it is not unified, right. So, ultimately it should come to a variable and a term. So, once a variable comes and a term comes, then it checks whether this variable occurs in that term or not. If it occurs, then it is not unifiable, right. If it does not occur, then it tries to construct a substitution x by t. So, with this substitution, it now updates the two literals, okay. So, after, up, after updating, it again goes to the first step, starts from the matching and it continues, is it okay. So, this is how it goes to compute the most general unifier. Now, our aim was to use the most general unifier for resolution, okay. Let us see one example, say we will take very simple example. Suppose, we have for each x, h x implies m x and m of a entails say h of a entails m a, okay. So, in resolution what we will do is try to convert all these things to SCNF, where we will get the disjunctive clauses. Then 
we should take the resolution on the disjunctive clauses as in P L that is what we are doing, but somewhere more generally unifier can be helpful. Okay. So, let us see. So, when converting to cloth set we would get from this as H x implies M x for all x is simply omitted right. So, that is same thing as not H x or M x this is a clause. So, manually when we write we will write with R, uh, but a machine you would take it as a set of those two literals right. Then we have H a and we bring it to the other side for using redox word of Saddam. We want to see that this gives you bottom by taking the resolvents. Okay. So, now when you take resolvent of these two, it sees one is not H x another is H a. So, imagine this is not H a. So, it would have gone for the conclusion as M x right, if it is not H a, but it is not exactly H a it is x. So, here is the role of the most general unifier. Now, it tries to unify not H x with not H a putting another not here, because unification needs both of same right. So, what it does unifies not H x with H a. So, this set of literal it computes sigma as the m g u of this set okay, with one not symbol added. Okay. Then it sees that x divided by or x by a is the substitution. Now, it applies the substitution here and then takes resolvent. Okay. So, once apply substitution this is not h a m a and h a. So, the resolution gives m a. So, all this done in one step apply the most general unifier and then resolve that whole thing is called resolution now fine it is just like propositional resolution, but before it we should apply the most general unifier. So, the most general unifier of what not h x not h a one not symbol is added here fine then it gets x by a as the substitution. So, it corresponds to your universal specification this would have been for all x not h x or m x from which you conclude not h a or m a fine then not h a and h a resolve to give you m a fine. Next step would be of course, not m a and m a to give bottom. Okay. Let us see one more example before giving the resolution rule. I just change it a bit takes a for each x for each y say p x y implies q x y and I have another which says for each y p y a. Therefore, I should get for each y q y a. Okay. It looks all right semantically. So, let us try to see what happens. So, when I take uh, use array it will come as not of this then I have to convert to SCNL. So, first one gives not p x y or q x y fine next one gives p y a okay. next not of this. So, that becomes there is y not q y a okay. Then you have to choose a scolem function for y, it does not entail q b y, but now you are choosing a scolem function because you want SCNFs. So, scolem function gives y replaced by some constant, it depends on nothing. So, this becomes simply not q b a, is that right? Now, let us apply resolution. So, here it takes not p x y as one literal and not p y a as another literal, he wants to unify those two. So, problem is find sigma to unify not p x y not p y a. Okay. So, how does it find 
it matches them, it gets the substitution x by y, okay. so it gets x by y, after applying x by y it gets not p y y not p y a, again it chooses another substitution which is y by a it composes them to get your sigma. Okay. So, once y by a is applied they unify to p a a. Okay. Then what happens not p x y now becomes not p a a and this one becomes p a a right. So, these two unify and then resolution is applied. So, both x and y has become a now because this composition is simply x by a y by a right because in x by y you will apply y by a first that x theta s right or t theta. So, that way this x becomes a y also becomes a that is the composition is that okay? to get the composition let us see you will be starting with this set a y by a remember right with this set this is x by a then add to it the other one y by a if y and x are not same okay? and then delete x by x form. So, nothing is to be deleted here that is the composition. So, now with this composition we get with this most general unifier x is a y is a. So, not p a a p a a gives you q a a. So, now what happens q a a and not q b a cannot be resolved upon no unification is possible because a is a constant b is also a constant. So, the method fails right what is the reason why the method fails. See even in SCNF we have seen it while converting to SCNF of a formula the what is the first step is the rectification right you rectify otherwise your pre next form will be wrong fine. So, what we have done here is each formula each sentence has been rectified, but as a formula totally it is not rectified right. So, while you are taking the most general unifier these variables are shared in two clauses y is a variable present here y is also a variable present here that is being shared that is being captured by this most general unifier. So, most general unifier is incapable of producing that sharing of variables its generality is lost because of the sharing of variables right. So, while converting to SCNF you must take care that the variables are not repeated in the clauses. So, that can be done by renaming or using a substitution which is a variant which makes them different not sharing the variables. Okay. So, while doing this our first assumption is before the resolution that all the clauses have using separate variables right different clauses are using different variables no share of variables is there then only you can go for MGU and so on. Now, you can formulate the resolution rule suppose A is a clause let us take two clauses two clauses having no variable in common then we go for the formulation of the resolution rule. So, let L 1 be a literal in A and L 2 be a literal in B. Then compute the most general unifier of these two literals L 1 L 2 oh, with a not sign huh? that is what we had seen right L 1 and not L 2. Then what happens? The resolvent of 
A B with respect to these two literals L 1 L 2 is sometimes we also write what is the MGU, what is the MGU being used there or simply we write sometimes resolution of AB even all the symbolisms are used. This will be equal to A minus this L 1 then B minus L 2 and then apply sigma. Okay, that is what we are doing here. You forget from this class P x y not P x y forget from this class P y a right then take whatever is there apply your Morse general unifier on that. So, q x y x by a y by a that gives q a is that okay. So, this is the resolvent. So, resolution rule says that from two clauses deduce its resolvent whatever way you get the resolvent does not matter. Okay. Is it clear? Fine, we will take one more example. See, the first one is equivalent to for each x p x, right? Is it okay? Similarly, the second one is equivalent to for each u not v u. So, clearly they should produce what term? They are unsatisfiable. Fine. So, let us apply resolution on that. Now, they do not have any variables in common. So, first one in S C N F will write as P X or P Y, second one as not P U or not P V. Fine. Now, let us choose one as P X, another as not P U. So, we will take negation of this and try to unify. So, our convention is if double negation comes that is omitted in the literals. Right? When you take the literal, you say not of that literal means if double negation that is omitted. So, that means we want to unify P x with P u. So, x by u. Right? So, with this x by u, what do you get? You would get P y or not P v. Okay. Now, sigma equal to x by u. Right. Now, when you take the further resolvent say P x or P y and P y are not P v. Fine. So, first thing is they are sharing a variable y. Okay. So, that should be renamed in one of the classes. So, that means we may write this as say P z or not P v then only we can go for resolution. Now, first two if I see say not P v with P x. So, sigma I would choose x by v and that gives P y or P z. Okay. Or if I do with this resolution, I would have chosen this as W. Okay. Now it is having no common variable with this, even no common variable with this. Anyway, I can resolve. So now when I resolve these two, say so with which one? P Z with not P U, so Z by U, or say U by Z. So, these two go and these two remain W and P V. Whatever way you go, either this way or that way. Right? So, resolving this with first one or resolving this with the second one, one of the approaches will be going. 
then next you will try to resolve this, but this is in the same form as earlier. So, it looks it will go on never ending process. Hmm? Do you see what is happening? See we had one danger here in the first example, uh, second example which says if you set the variables you will get into problems, you will not get the conclusions what you want. The other one is telling if you do not share the variables you will not get the conclusions what you want right. So, second one anyway we have agreed because always we can rename, but this one is a major hurdle because always you can rename. So, there is no harm in renaming then why do not we rename, but if you rename there is problem it is going to be unending. So, this means resolution principle as we have formulated is not complete perhaps there is another rule which we require to handle this kind of things which the resolution or taking resolvents is not enough right. So, we try to see what is happening here main thing is the equivalence we wrote here for each y for each x p x or p y n tells p x that we are not able to get from the resolution process because they are not sharing the variables. Had they shared the variables say p y or p v now you can resolve p x with not p v and get p y directly. Okay. So, this is the main problem there then we, we have a remedy what we do is even if they do not share the variables we can do something with that. See main thing is we have a class p x p y say not q z. From this class we would like to infer p x not q z or p y not q z this is what we want. Okay. P x or P y should give us just P y fine. So, which says that a subset of the set of literals can be brought down to one literal by applying some substitution that is what it says right. So, let us formulate it is called a factor of this class P y not Q z is a factor of P x P y not Q z. So, let us define the factor. Suppose C is a class is a set of literals let d be a subset of c having at least two literals then you can unify them to one class let sigma be a unifier or we can take most general unifier directly be the most general unifier of D. So, that means once you take D sigma, D sigma becomes a singleton like your P x P y becomes P y then keep all the others apply also sigma on that that is the factor. So, we say then C sigma is a factor of C. Okay. So, this factor sometimes we write as factor of C with respect to this class set D that is enough because M G will be fixed by D itself if they are unified. Sometimes we also keep that sigma. Right. So, what this suggests is not only deduce the resolution or resolvent of two classes two literals, but along with that you have another rule deduce also the factor if there is a set of literals deduce a factor of it. Okay. So, let us redo that. So, here we have the class sets P x or P y not P u or not P. Now, how to choose a factor? So, we just take this set of literals P x or P y fine. 
now p x is a literal p y is a literal that is my d there are two literals so i just take d as that so c is p x or p y d i take also equal to c p x or p y now their most general unifier is x by y right so sigma equal to x by y then this says if i start my deduction p x r p y as a hypothesis i would go in the next step p y my justification will be 1 and factor of 1 with sigma equal to x by y that is how it will go. Next step I would do third one which is my hypothesis not P o or not P v. Okay. So, that is my hypothesis and fourth one I would go for factor again. So, 2 oh sorry 3 factor of x by this is u by v. Okay. So, these line numbers can be omitted because anyway it is there. What are the formulas? Fine. Next, I would say I resolve P y and not P v. Fine. That would give bottom directly because here sigma equal to I will write the 9 numbers 2, 4, sigma equal to y by v. That is the more general unifier of P y not not P v. Okay. Is that clear? That is all. So, along with taking resolvents, we should have factors. That is what it says. Let us see one more example. What about this class set? It is unsatisfiable. Yeah. But how do we proceed? So, instead of this t is a suppose a variable, u is a variable, then directly you can give right, because these two will give resolution as bottom with sigma equal to t by u, right, that is clear. Now, let us change it slightly, what happens? If we change them to constants, let us say. Now, we cannot take resolvent of these two, at least one variable there then you can do, right? but there is no variable. So, P a not P b that is all. So, something has to do with this equality, because they are equal you can think of P a as P b also, that is why it is giving contradiction. right? Now, as such it does not give any contradiction by resolution method, not even by factors, because factors also need variables to be substituted upon, fine. So, you need something else here, that means resolution along with factor is not a complete method, it does not handle equality. Okay. So, for this we have another rule, which is called the taking paramodulants, or we say just paramodulation. So, it is a bit complicated, not so simple as those two, but we will see how to proceed. 
So, suppose A is a class having say T equal to U belongs to A. So, here I am taking T and U as general terms, not only constants are variables, general terms. A is a class, T equal to U belongs to this, like this. And then let us say X of S belongs to B. So, here when you write X of S, it means X is a literal, where S is a term which occurs in X. Fine? x of s means that here, this is the notation. Okay. Then paramodulant of a and b is a minus t equal to u, then b minus x s. So, take their union, join to that x u and then is the most generally unified of of s and t. So, here we need most general unifier of terms. Then the rule of paramodulation says that from two classes A and B deduce their paramodulant. Suppose this is my T, this is my U. Okay. So, let us say T equal to A and U equal to B. Then we should have another literal in B, another class. Let us say in A, P A. So, S equal to A and X S equal to P A. Okay? We have two classes. Then this says first delete T equal to U from A. So, we can write this one as delete T equal to U, delete x s or x of u apply sigma most general unifier of s t. This is the paramodulation process. Okay. So, let us do that. Now, if I delete t equal to u, there is nothing in a. Okay. I delete x of s from b there is nothing there. Okay. Then I add x of u which is p u is b. Right. Then apply sigma which is most general unifier of s and t. s is a and t is a. So, sigma is empty there is no variable in it. Let us call it empty substitution, nothing is applied, right? it is kept as it is. It is the identity of the composition of substitutions. So, that means this becomes P B, this is what we require. Right? So, from T A equal to B and P A you are able to infer now P B because of paramodulation. Right? Usually, this is the form you will be using most of the time. Fine. Suppose you have S equal to T and some P S, then you should be able to infer from this P T, this is what it says. Right? But it is a bit more complicated, it can handle still bigger things, not only this much, that is why this rule. Okay? So, this example can be done now, because from these two we would get P B by paramodulation, then take resolvent of P B and not P B that gives the answer. Okay. So, we have the third rule of paramodulation. 
okay is it enough or we are going to give more because equality it looks we can handle but there is one problem in all of these three rules you need at least two literals to apply anything can you see that in taking the resolvents you need at least two literals on which you apply the resolvent okay then in taking the factors you need at least two literals in d so that they will unify to become one literal fine in paramodulation you need at least two s equal to t and x of s or x of u in fact three are there but some of them can be same so at least two will be required okay now how do you infer t equal to t which is valid hmm? this is valid right now how does resolution method will give t equal to t it cannot okay because everyone needs to well you can repeat it you can repeat it as two suppose you repeat can you still get so that this is valid so if you repeat that means what will happen phi enters t equal to t that's what you have to prove not t equal to t enters t equal to t okay so it seems nothing still it gives nothing so what do we do is this will be our fourth rule anywhere you can deduce t equal to t because that's what we are not able to get fine so altogether there will be four rules of resolution one is taking resolvent another is taking factors third one is taking paramodulants fourth is the equality it looks like an axiom now anywhere you can introduce it you can deduce from anything right so let's write the rules so first rule is are taking resolvents this says if you have a clause c along with some literal say l1 okay and then another which is d and another literal say l2 then from this you conclude c or d of sigma right so what are the conditions here sigma equal to most general unifier of l1 not l2 right and then c or l1 d or l1 they don't have any common variables that is also required fine so no common variables we'll just write this way <coughs> these are the conditions then from these two you can deduce this next we have the factors which says if you have c or l1 or lk then from this you can conclude c sigma where sigma equal to most general unifier of all these clauses all these literals l1 to lk right so finally this one will come to c sigma yeah c sigma and one of this say l1 sigma right because once you apply the sigma l1 sigma equal to l2 sigma equal to lk sigma all of them become same so that remains and all the others with sigma right that is your factor rule so next one is taking paramodulants or paramodulation so there we have say some clause along with uh, t equal to u okay 
and there is another class with x depending on s. From these two, you conclude C or D or x of u and then sigma. Fine, where sigma is m g u of of which one? M G of S and T. Okay. So there we are writing in the notation C minus something. Now that C is this total thing, that earlier C, right? So it will be easier to apply this way. Next rule is our equality, which looks like an axiom. So, wherever it is, you do not need anything here, you can infer t equal to t. That is all, these are the rules of resolution. Right? So, this is really a complete procedure now, we will not prove this, but we will see in some examples how it is applied. And these two rules of resolution and factor, they are really combined together, that is called the generalized resolution or sometimes they call this one as binary resolution and their combination is the resolution, where what happens is you just modify the resolution rule. In the resolution rule, you are taking L 1 as a literal, L 2 as a literal, then taking their unification. right? So, what happens in the general case, instead of L 1, you take a subset of literals here, it is a set of literals, this is also a set of literals, then they are unified once unified omit all of them get this direct. Okay. If you do that way then that will be the generalized resolution, so that you do not need the factor rule, but while using manually this will be easier than choosing a subset and going on doing it. So, what are the first steps you will be doing? Huh? Redux word of Saddam. Right. So, first we will take uh, this okay, use deduction theorem because it is implies. So, you take this to the other side, bring it here. Okay. Then R A, so that gives this and tells bottom. So, you want a resolution refutation always, always it should end with bottom. So, these are the premises now from which we have to start they might be sharing variables that we have to take care, they should not share variables. right? Now, what is the next one? Is it rectified? Yes, for all x there is y, there is z, they are all different variables, first one is rectified, hmm? but then you have to pull the quantifiers and bring it to SCNF. So, how to pull the quantifiers? z does not occur everywhere, anywhere here. right? So, this z can be brought to there is z, then similarly there is y, but there is y will become for all y. Okay. It is before the implication sign. So, T y and B x y implies P z and G x y. Okay. What about this? Not there is x t x. So, this we will write as for each x not t x, which you would like to change x to something else. So, you will write as for each u not t u. Okay. You want different variables in different classes, but that may not guarantee after only converting to this you can know what are the clauses? That will be in S C N F, this is a conjunction of disjunctions. In each conjunct, you should use different variables, right? that we will see, if needed we will give there. Now, what about the last one, that is there is x, there is y, t y and b x y, as it is only we have to change the variables. So, there is v, there is w, T w and 
B V W. Fine. So we leave it here. Then next job we have to do is convert this one to FCNF. Convert this one to FCNF, which already is. All these three have to be converted. and then get the class sets apply the resolution right so this is what we will be doing next okay so we stop here so all that we have done is just formulated the resolution rules